What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Josh Reese, back at it again with another video. Now, before you smash the like button and subscribe, today we're going to get into my OptomCast application. So I'm just going to share what the entire process looks like of filling out your entire OptomCast application to kind of calm your anxieties a bit. I know a lot of people have reached out about the particulars of applying to optometry school, and I just kind of wanted to show you everything that's in the application. This is the entire application that I submitted to Midwestern. So let's get right into it. So the first two pages are just personal information and I don't necessarily need you guys to see that, but this is the, op, the OAT scores. So I'm not showing any of this information to kind of brag. I know I was a little in the middle of the pack, but just use these as a reference to know, okay, this is Josh, what his application was, and if he can do it, I can do it. So what you want for OAT and GPA is just at least above a 300 and at least above a 3.0, and that way you'll definitely be considered. Anything below that, you know, it'll be a little bit harder for them to consider you, but it doesn't mean you're any less of an applicant. So this is my averages for my um, OAT. And I'm gonna breeze through some of these things. So if you want to pause and look, um, at various parts of the application, feel free to. So this is my, the next part is all of my classes that I took, my AP classes, everything I had to submit as far as any semester that I had grades. Now the most useful part is right at the end where it puts it all into the GPAs. This is where they look at. They don't necessarily go through and look at all the classes, but they're interested in your GPA. So my overall by the time of application was a 3.81, which is was a little bit higher than my BYU GPA. I don't know how they calculate it um, necessarily differently, but 3.81 was the one that they looked at. I know senior year, I got a few Cs. It was lower than that by the time I graduated, but this is a time of application when they're interested. And then they split it up into all the prereqs. They wanna know how well you did in each of those. But the most important ones they look at are your, the overall GPA and your overall science GPA. So make sure that those are as high as you can get them. And I forgot to mention with the OAT, the two ones that they really look at are the overall academic average and your total science average. So just make sure that those are as high as you can get them. Now, the next part, once you clear the, the screening of having a good GPA, good OAT is the supporting information. So they break it down into a few different things like extracurricular, uh, optometric experience, occupation, volunteering, but these are just kind of your, who are you? What have you done in college? They wanna know about it. And so they give you a part, uh, put in how much you've done, how many hours a week, when you did it, and a paragraph about it. Now I'm not gonna go through and read the, every paragraph, but what I want you to do is you can pause and kind of read through it. You want to treat this as if it's them looking at your LinkedIn profile. Who is this person in college? What did they do? What did they learn? So the first one was being the BYU Optometry Club president. The next one was being a research assistant. I did some research with the professor. And pause, you can see it. And then, and then I was a member of the optometry club. So you want to kind of put a lot of stuff in here. This is your part to be braggy. Don't be too braggy, but be braggy. You know, you want to show them everything you've done. You don't want to leave anything off of this. So if you're a member of the club and the president, put them both on there. Shame. No shame is what I meant to say. Now the next is optometric experience. So I put that I worked as a vision therapist. This could also go under the work experience, but I wanted to put as much under optom um, optometric experience as I could. Now I probably should have put optometry club under this as well, but that's in the past. So this is my work as a vision therapist, my work as an optician, and then I also did some stuff with Friends for Sight with vision screening. And I'll put that all under optometric experience. Next one is all my jobs that I've had. So I was a Spanish instructor. I was a lab tech for a chemistry lab at BYU. And then I was also a custodian that I put facility specialist and volunteer supervisor. You just kind of want to talk yourself up, right? This is, you know, it's LinkedIn, right? This is, you can lie about it as long as you can defend it. If they ever ask you about it and you can say, yeah, yeah, that's legit. They'll understand, right? So you make yourself look as cool as you can. Even if it was custodian, talk yourself up, right? No shame in, in working as a custodian. 
Now here's some of the volunteer experience I had. Oh no, this is shadowing. So they wanna know how much you shadowed. Now shadowing is a big thing. A lot of pre-optometry people talk shadowing up a lot, but all that it is, is they wanna know, do you know what optometry is and have you seen enough of it to know you like it? So you want to have at least two or three things on there, right? So that they know, okay, this person knows. Now, two of them were the doctors I worked for, and then one was a phone call during COVID uh, to someone at a VA hospital. So mine's not the most impressive, but you don't need it to be the most impressive as long as they can know, okay, this person knows optometry. So here's my phone call that I did. Here's my shadowing I did with the optometrist that I, the vision therapy doctor I got a job with. And then here's one with my just family practice that I got a job with. So they just want enough to know that, um, that's what you did and fill out the paragraph so that they know you learn from it. This isn't just, I had a two hour phone call. This is, this is exactly what I learned. They wanna know that you grew from that experience as well and that you are prepared to be an optometrist. And then the next one is volunteering. So this is some mentoring I did. This is, I was part of a nonprofit choir and then a nonprofit dance group. And then I did some work with refugees at BYU and I also served a mission for my church. And so those are all little paragraphs explaining those. And then they want to know the achievements and awards you had. And honestly, this section scared me and it was blank for a lot of the time that I was filling it out because I just honestly didn't know, didn't know what to put in here. But if you've ever received any sort of scholarship or any sort of anything, right? Just kind of how I said below, as long as you can defend it, put it on there. This is your time to shine put it on there. So I received a PD bio scholarship. I put it on there. Uh, academic scholarship my first semester. I was on the dean's list my first semester. I just put put them both on there. Um, I also received this hometown scholarship for just a thousand dollars, but put it on there, talk yourself up. And then I did some AP classes and got an award. So we put it on there as well. I technically didn't know if that counted because it wasn't college, but no shame. Put everything on there that you need to. And then these are my references. One, um, I know a lot of colleges require different things with um, different references, but this is kind of my four that covered most bases. So my first one was my pre-optometry pre advisor who also taught me a class. So they were kind of a professor advisor kind of um, relationship. The doctor, the optometrist that I was a vision therapy for. Uh, my chemistry professor. Now this one was interesting. I was weighing between two people. One was the dean of the college that I got an A in his class. And one was my chemistry professor that he knew me very well. He knew I was a hard worker. I ended up getting an A minus in his class, but I worked hand in hand with him in my chem lab as well. So you want to pick the people who know you the best and who can write um, speaking to your character the most, not necessarily people who have the most letters after their name. So, um, you just don't want to make, you don't want your letter of rec to be, I don't really know this person, but they got this grade in this class, right? You want them to be able to speak to your character as a future optometrist. And then person who, the person who oversaw my volunteering as a missionary for my church. And then the last part of it, after filling out all the survey kind of questions, is the, the, oh, is the big essay kind of stuff. So they, in 2020, I don't know how the future years will be, but they had a little part where you can put how COVID affected you. Now this, they're kind of, they wanna see if you wanna complain a lot. So uh, what my advisor told me to do is you want to state the facts, don't complain because complaining will be a red flag to them. State the facts and say how you grew as a person. So um, some of these are just information. Uh, and I believe one of them was more of a paragraph and you wanna treat it as if it's, it's a paragraph. You don't wanna just put a few sentences. You wanna, if they give you room to write, they want you to fill it out. Just like those, you know, the experience with shadowing and stuff like that, fill it out. Make sure they know I've learned something from this. I am a substantial human being. I am a good applicant for your program. I will be an asset to you. And then the next big one is the, uh, the big essay question. So your personal statement. So the personal statement doesn't change uh, from year to year, maybe a few words change, but this is basically what they want is they want to know your inspiration for being an optometrist, your preparation, your aptitude and motivation, as well as your interest and career goals. 
you could put that however you want to, but you want to make sure that they can see you through the essay. They want to, uh, they want you to jump out of the piece of paper as a human being. They want to go through an experience with you. You don't want to just talk at them. This isn't a restatement of your resume or your grades or anything like that. They want to see who Josh is. They want to see who that next applicant is. And so you, uh, I kind of worded it as a story and I took them through it. I know I had my sister who's an English teacher, my wife who writes way better essays than me, and um, my pre-optometry advisor all went through it, tore it apart, gave me a bunch of feedback. It's hard because it's your idea, baby, but you take all their feedback and you just make it better and better. So I sent them each it two different times to have them tear it apart. And this is my final product. So feel free to pause and read through it. And then uh, pause and read through the next half as well. And hopefully it'll give you kind of some ideas. Now that's basically it. Uh, and if you have any other questions, I hope that this helped you uh, feel more confident about your application. And I hope that um, you can feel confident enough to fill out your OptonCast application and good luck this cycle. I know that if you're someone who's watching this video, you're already the kind of person who's gonna do so well on it. So don't stress, just try your hardest and good luck with everything. Bye.